man. And, and understanding that there is an inner man and there's an outer man. When Jesus said the kingdom of God is where? Within you. So this person that was born of the Spirit is a kingdom person. And they live and reside in that kingdom. You're not going to heaven one day. Heaven came down and the glory of God filled your soul. Listen, until you understand that all the attributes of the external man have nothing to do with the attributes of the inside man, the inner man. You see, God wants us to understand the new person who we are in Christ is more real than the one we are in the natural world. He said, though my outward man is perishing, my inward man is being renewed daily. <clears throat> I found in my journey in 33 years of realizing I was an animal, I was a mess, I was full of wrath and indignation and horror and bitterness and all the things that the carnal flesh can give you. I didn't realize that all that carnal stuff was found in Galatians verse chapter 6. When I can go in there and look and see that the things of the flesh are manifest, there are many. And do you realize he was saying all those things are inside every one of us as believers? Murder, rape, plunder, th everything that can happen in the flesh is in you and me. At any moment, you could find yourself killing somebody. Now, right or wrong or different, that Javon trial and all that stuff, you know, look, <clears throat> that thing is a tragedy. It's a tragedy. It's a horror that a young boy died. But that's not what we got to look at. That guy was not a wanton killer running around trying to kill somebody. But because he did not know the Word of God and he didn't know that things of the flesh can manifest, he got himself into a wrong place at a wrong time and he manifested something that took a life. There's no winners in that trial. That young boy, 17-year-old, is dead. Now, he wasn't the cookie-cutting little 13-year-old sweet kid buying Skittles and a tea. He had pot. He was growing in his bedroom. He was, had some hor horrible things he said on the cell phone. So both of them were flesh creatures. Both of them didn't understand the power of the Spirit of God to listen to it and let the inner man make the decision and the choice. When you walk in the Spirit, then you won't be consumed by the lusts of your flesh. That spiritual man is the one you need to take credence to. You need to listen to the man on the inside and say, God, how does that man grow? Well, 1 Peter 2, 2 said, As a newborn babe, desire earnestly the sincere milk of the Word of God, wherefore you may grow thereby, if so be that you've tasted that the Lord is gracious. The Word can't grow up a lost person. You can read the Bible all day long, and if you're not born again, it means absolutely nothing to you. Because you have to have a spirit to understand it. It feeds your spirit. It doesn't feed your carnal mind. That's why we see all the horrible things that happen is people are carnally minded instead of spiritually minded. They, they, they go by the external man instead of the internal man, who is eternal. you got to grow in love with that guy. And you know what's going to produce by you staying on a stable diet of the Word of God and growing up in the Spirit, you're going to have inner silence. Everybody say that. Inner, inner silence. silence. <clears throat> the kingdom that's within you is the kingdom that's built on peace. Can I get an amen? amen? So then you have a cool spirit. Everybody say, I be cool. That is who you are in God. You are a cool spirit. Proverbs 17, 27. I'm going to try to keep it this out. That's not working too fast for me. 17, 27. Y'all can look at that one. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. See, knowledge is going to increase the excellency of the spirit that's in you. How many of you got something given to you one to like a computer and you didn't know diddly doop about it? How do you turn it on? What's it saying to me? How come I push this and it said don't compute? What? Did I call somebody? 
What's the matter? Oh, you didn't push the font and the clicker and the dicker at the same time. Oh, so then I need that person to constantly walk me through every day when it, when it just blinked at me and now it's going. You ever been there? Yeah. Well, see, it means that your knowledge level has not got the capacity level in order to do it. So God's saying, I want you to be educated. I want you to grow up in the grace and revelation of my spirit in your spirit and cause a harmony inside you that you're not always threatened and intimidated by other people's excellence. Look, there's a lot of people that are going to know a whole lot more than you or me. But we shouldn't be intimidated, nor should we follow them because they seem to have a more excellent way. We need to always follow the Holy Spirit and follow the Word of God in our own life and trust Him that He's going to make us peace be still. Psalms 46.10 He said, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Now, if he said, be still, then is God nervous? Is he falling apart? Is he biting his fingernails? No. So then he says, I want you as my children to be still and know that I am God. The knowledge of knowing God is first in priority in your life. Not because you can figure him out, but because you accept and identify that he is is God. Can I get an amen? He said, I will be exalted amongst the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. And how is he he's exalted is you're not stressed out. You're not freaking out all the time over circumstances. You got a peace. Well, there's something else my daddy's got to take care of. I ride tickets I can't pay. But he pays for every one of them. You see, when you can trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not lean on your intellect, your own ability, and you understand, my daddy is God. And I'm going to trust him. I'm going to be still. Matthew 5, 8, when we see in the Beatitudes. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. See, to, to hear God, you must maintain a pro proper atmosphere. How many times have you cried out to God, oh, woe's me, God, this is happening, oh, God, it's terrible, oh, God, what's it going? Anybody? Come raise your hand. We all do. And God says, uh, excuse me, you've entered my courts with the wrong attitude. I don't want you telling me what you're broke and you're messed up and you can't fix. I want you to go, shh. There we go. He wants you to be quiet. He already knows what you need even before you pray. He wants you to listen to him. When you're traumatized and going through all kinds of exploitation by external effects, it's easy for you to go, but, 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 but God, but God, I don't know. And you're trying to find, but pray for somebody. Will. And God says, shh, peace, be still. I have not left you. I am right here in the midst of your circumstance. So you've got to recognize that and purify your heart. Don't be double-minded. Don't think, well, I didn't do enough good this week, so God's going to punish me. Or I didn't give enough, so God's not going to like me. Or I'm See, the minute you qualify God's love for you based on what you do, you're in deep doo-doo. Because Satan will always, through the carnal mind, cause you to look like you're one who neglects instead of one who belongs. And you cannot afford that. That's why he said, thou shalt not sweat it. You've got to know that God is always for you and not against you, and that you've got to have your heart pure to that fact that he is God. You need to be calm, cool, and collected. I've had people get mad at me. How come you're not upset? How come you're not... What for? You think me belly aching is going to change one thing? Believe me, I've had probably 35 years of belly aching, and all I did was get cramps. I didn't get the answer. But when I shut up and listened to what he said and made a decision to believe what he <laughs> said, then he reciprocated my condition and made me happy instead of sad. See, God is not just this thing way out there in the universe somewhere. He's in your heart. He ain't going nowhere. So we got to start learning how to focus on that and cool down. 1 Thessalonians 
But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. That day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. <clears throat> you see, when I'm not looking at what's going to happen in the government, when I'm not looking at what's going to happen in the circumstances in the church world, when I'm not looking at all that stuff, I'm looking unto Jesus, who's got it all in control. When I went to that concert the other night, and he said, I am he who was and is and is to come. See, I get thoughts, and I'm going to let go of them. I meditate on them. I want to know, and I want to see what I'm hearing, not just hear. I want to see. <clears throat> and when he went to Peter that day, and he said, Peter, who do they say I am? Yada, yada, yada. Who do you say I am? I say, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. How many of you can say today that Jesus is your Lord? Amen. Has he walked in the room and talked to you? No. Has he picked you up in a coach and took you off somewhere? No. But you said it as bold as like, man, I know it without a shadow of a doubt. That's because he gave you the spirit of life in you that knows that's the truth. A person cannot know Jesus unless the Father sent His Spirit to cause you to be redeemed. It says the Holy Spirit's job was to draw men and women to salvation. Let me tell you the heritage of the devil. He wants to get you confused. He wants you tortured and tormented. He wants you to look at life through circumstances and problems. We are never to look at life through circumstances and problems. We're to look at life through Christ, through the Anointed One who saved us and redeemed us. And as we walk in that, then we can be cool, calm, and collective. Why? Because we're going to face people who are not born again, who do not know God, and they're full of the devil. They're full of hell. They're full of confusion. See, what Satan brought to the world was confusion. The Bible said strife is the father of confusion. That's why I said there were the six sins God hates, but yea, the seventh he hates, it's an abomination to him. And that's that those that sow strife and gender discord amongst the brethren. Well, I don't believe what they teach over there. Well, I don't believe what they teach over there. And now you got this strife going on, and you don't like each other, and you're talking bad about them, and all of a sudden, confusion sets in. Till I thought I knew God. He was so wonderful. He's the lion. He's the lamb. Yay, I'm wonderful. And now I've got all this confusion. This, blood, this bunch hate that bunch. That bunch hate this bunch. This one says they're not anointed enough. That one says they, need, they don't know what anointing is. You got, you've got all these schisms. And Jesus goes, peace be still, for I am God. Jesus never sweated it nowhere except for when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he took our sin upon himself. Then he sweated it. Thank God we should never sweat it because he sweated for us. Now we're born again. Now we walk in the light. Now we understand there's an inner peace. Well, guess what? The inner peace has to come not from external circumstances changing, but come from the word of God that's in your heart. You plant the word of God. It's a seed of righteousness. He said that we were born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, which was the word of God. So when you feed your spirit man, your inner man, the word of God, and then the devil comes to try to steal that seed, he doesn't want that seed to stay in you, because why? That seed will transform you. All of a sudden, you've got a tree of love coming out of you. All of a sudden, you've got a tree of peace coming out of you. Pretty soon, the fruit on your tree is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, meekness, gentleness, goodness, temperance, faith, against the such. There is no law against it. I don't care. The people that hate me, I'm drawn more to them. Because that's what a kingdom man does. He starts realizing, bless their heart. If I reject them, how are they ever going to find the love of God that I have? My love's not hidden in me to say, mm, I got it, y'all can't have it. Y'all get something, how you find it, I don't know, but I got mine. No, we're to be those who represent God's love for a race that does not know him. We don't hate them. We hate the one who's controlling them, manipulating them. And that's what we've got to keep ourselves focused on and stay cool. See, we should never be upset 
and get into turmoil in the darkness. I've learned and I'm growing the older I get in God, the more mature I get into God, the more I understand we have God and they do not. And our job is to give them God. Not a hard time. We always have to take that position. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God didn't give us the spirit of fear. So what is fear? Y'all get this look. For God hath not given us the of so what is fear it's a spirit everybody say that say it again say it again it's a spirit and that's when you know when fear creeps upon you goes oh yeah you better watch it over there it's going to happen it's going to watch out you and fear tries to grab a hold of you it wants to control you there are those that are led by fear and then there's those that are led by faith and faith is what god said over what the devil says. <clears throat> Jimmy Kirby's little daughter went down, she went to the Philippines on a, on a mission trip, a little high school girl. And she saw a baby, you know those, those places they call the, the dump? It's, a, it's just everybody goes there to get scraps and food to try to eat. Thousands of people that are starving, and they go there, and a lot of them they find dead bodies and everything. It's just a horrific place. And she went there. And she said there was a little, like a two-and-a-half, three-year-old baby, child, screaming and crying and sick and horrific-looking and just horrible condition. Somebody dumped it there. Somebody just threw it out on the trash heap and left it. She went over there and laid hands on that child and rebuked the spirit of fear and death off that child, and it got healed instantaneously. Peace came in it. It calmed down. She was holding the child in her arms. And they gave it to someone to take it to a, uh, where the orphanages are. But she saw the miracle power of the God who loves, not the God who kills. And she prayed over that child. God was using that child in that circumstance to reveal in that little girl the power of the living God that's in her inner man. Not by going by the circumstances of a tragedy, but involving her inner man into getting into the discourse of what was going on. That child was healed, given to a place to get a functional life. You see, the God inside us wants us for His manifestations. He wants us to be ready and prepared all the time, instant and in season and out, to help somebody. That's the inner man. But we war with the external man who's always selfish, self-centered, trying to get involved in what it wants and will miss the things that God wants us to do. And that's why God said that you've got to get quiet inside yourself so you can hear God. Pastor James cannot direct you into who you are in God. Only God can do that. But we've got to silence the activities and noises of outside to allow God on the inside to show us the way, the truth, and the life. Then you mature and grow, and you don't have to call Pastor James, go pray for the sick. You'll be praying for him. You won't have to go out there and say, oh, brother, go over this mess is going on. You'll go over there, and you'll get the same results that you expected out of me because he's the same God of you as he is over me. And as we grow in that spiritual man, we get stronger. John 14, 27. See, your mind has a great effect on your spirit. He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, neither I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We need to stop allowing ourselves to be upset. Uh-oh. Did you take that trash out this morning? You didn't. You know what's going to happen? It's going to be piled up out there and dogs are going to knock it over. And go, oh, rah, 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 rah. You just got upset over a circumstance that was meaningless and really didn't have anything at all to do with anything. The trash will come a day and a half later and they'll pick it up. But we'll get on to do it. Well, the dogs and the cats and the frogs and everything's going to happen. And we get all stressed out, have a horrible day, 
fight with our spouse, fight with the life. And God says, how come just not taking the trash out that day implemented this discourse? That's why God's saying, peace, be still. Don't allow yourself to be ruled by the consciousness of your mind, but let your heart rise up. 2 Timothy 4, 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. See, we need to be calm, cool, and steady. Do you know that God may have ordained you today to meet somebody and do something for him? But Satan will come in through strife and discourse. He'll get you involved with something that ticks you off. And you will miss, you'll walk right by what God wanted you to do. And you won't find out till you get home in heaven. See, we should be righteous conscious, not self-conscious. That all we're worried about is ourselves. Because God wants a deeper work inside us. See, a clear conscience is a must to maintain inner silence. Every time the devil can get you into condemnation and you get grieved in something, you know, how many of you ever felt like a hypocrite? You said, praise the Lord, Pastor, and then you walked away and you cussed somebody out. Huh? <clears throat> and then you're guilty, and then you're condemned. All you got to do is say, Dad, I'm sorry, I messed up. Okay, no problem, let's go. The devil said, no, 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 wait a minute, it ain't that easy. That greasy grace, that sloppy agape. Don't listen to someone that condemns you. Someone that condemns you, forgive them, move away from it. Just walk in the light as he's in the light. I'm under construction. There's a lot of things God's changing me and transforming me, but he can't do it any more quicker than I will say, peace be still, James. Don't react. Wait. Just get along. Get away. I went around some old friends the other night, and they're playing cards, and my God, I can see why I don't go around them that much anymore. It, it was so much strife and junk about stupid stuff. I was just going, and my mouth wanted to go, Bleh! but I had to go, no, pull back. What have you been teaching? What have you been learning? I just wouldn't do it, and I won the game. <laughs> I got the victory because I became silent and didn't become opinionated. Everybody say amen, Brother James. Wow. See, I mean, I got a lot of opinions. I get them, amen. Come on, I'm going to get a church of hallelujahs out of here. Let's pick on Pastor Wall. That's good stuff. I got you. You see, the whole thing about a person with a cool spirit, you ready for this? They can be trusted. There's no greater joy than you're going to have in your life when you know you can trust someone. They're not going to manipulate you, con you, rip you off. They're, they're, you don't find them because most people are so self-indulgent they won't take their time to sit with God and have peace with God and then be a revelatory person for God that can show the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. They might not think of you until tragedy comes with them. Boom, I get them phone calls. I'm a 911 from heaven. Brother James, my little daughter died. They didn't even come to the funeral. We don't got nobody. We haven't gone to church in years. Not a problem. I'll be there shortly. Just what's the dates? Give me their time. That's what Jesus would do. It's not like, well, where's your pastor? Why don't you go get them to do it? Sorry. You got to work out that salvation to be the person that loves and, and doesn't look at what you stand to get out of it. See, I need to learn, can I be trusted by God? Can I be trusted by myself? Can I be trusted by others? If you're going to be a mouthpiece for God, if you're going to represent his kingdom, then you've got to produce trusting abilities that others will not see you're going to rip them off. I mean, you've got enough users out there that turn people into losers. But if you've got livers, you'll turn them into givers. When our whole purpose is to substantiate the kingdom that's inside us and we're so in love with it, I don't want to be carnal. I don't want to just play flesh games. I really want to see Jesus mounting up on that white horse and coming back for us. I, I said, God, I get some more excited when I saw that, when he said Peter told us who he was, Paul told us who he is, Revelation 19 told us who he's going to be coming. 
He's mounting up on a white horse that's got faithful and true written on it, and he's going to have eyes of fire, and he's coming back with a scepter of righteousness in his hand, and he is coming back as the King of kings and Lord of lords, and he's coming back for his bride, the church. Woo! Man, I'll see you, Jesus. Woo! You're on that horse already. God, I'm ready, God. Break the light right through the dawn. Let's see it. Well, if you got that heart, then you want to be giving that away to people. You don't see loss and... You see, lost needing what we got. Well, then I must qualify myself. What am I doing in this life but representing Jesus? Somebody needs him. So when somebody really just messes over you, it ought to be a light going on. I'm going to pray for them, God. I ain't got the slightest clue how I'm going to win them over to you. But I know you do, and you put me across their path. Maybe buy them a Coke. Maybe just, uh, you got anything you need prayer for today? Maybe just concerned about what they're going through. They look like they were upset today when they came to work. You're just all of a sudden saying, I'm drawn to that person, God. Help me. I thank God those men came to me when I was in the plants. I come in hung over so bad, my eyes were blood red. I mean, I was horrible. I was coming in that work dragging in there. They say, man, Jan, Jesus is all over you. I'd go in the bathroom, look at the mirror and go, where did they see that? Because they saw through the spirit. They didn't see through the flesh. They even knew I was saved. Because I got born again when I was 12 years old. There's a difference when you're saved. I can meet someone that's saved and I know that they're saved. They don't matter what they're drinking, smoking, cussing, doing all the horrors, been through every hell. That has a great to do with condemnation and a lot less to do with the revelation. If you'll stop condemning people and start revealing to people, they might all of a sudden identify with what they got when they were a child. And they'll grow up in the grace and revelation of God, not have to be born again, again, and again, and again, and again. They'll just get some food inside them and get them nourished. And all of a sudden, the power of God will take over from there. See, emotional decisions bring failure every time. Everyone said they just live by faith. Senses are not to be trusted. Many a person has used their sense knowledge to help someone and it brought more harm than it did good. That sucker, I paid their rent. I did all this for them. I tried, and look at them. They're still back out there doing what they did. That just disgusts me. God was really using that person to help you, not to help them. You thought by your good works and deeds that you're recognized and glorified by God. God said that is a path into destruction. We're all saved by grace through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Not of works, lest we boast or brag about it. And you got the worst person to deal with is a carnal Christian. Say, thou shalt not be carnal. Thou shalt not be carnal. Say it again. You see, your carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God because you know what? You're going to tell God what he ought to do. Well, now, God, wait a minute. I, I see over here in this chapter, and I say, now let me orchestrate the way it ought to be. And God looks at you and says, I ain't going to talk. I'm just going to back off. Your folly will get you where you're going to get your reward. You'll find yourself traumatized, messed up, hurting, depressed, anxiety-ridden, frustrated. Why doesn't life work for me? Peace, be still. You're too running, you're too noisy, and you're never going to get there. See, a hasty spirit always causes trouble. Ecclesiastes 5. He said, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon the earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. 
Just being noisy about God doesn't produce peace of God. We all have opinions. They're like elbows. And if I mess with your favorite opinion versus my favorite opinion, then we've got disappointment. Because one of us is going to be right and the other one isn't. In God's eyes, we're both wrong. Because we're not, sowing, uh, we're not bringing peace and wanting to get an, a solution. We're listening to our own pollution and trying to correct others with what is spoiled in us. I, I've heard many Christians do me the thing like, look here, I thank God for my church. I thank God for us people, us saved, us righteous, us holy, us good ones. Oh, we went and watched a movie the other night. I was ready to argue, but that's okay. It was not bad. We, we got, hit our eyes from the sex scenes. But you supported the industry that put it out there. Don't look holy and righteous and, and, and paint your own wonderfulness and then go get with other wonderful people just like you. Get out there in a world who's desperate and dying and crying and insane and wanting to kill themselves. Then go in there and give them the love and the righteousness that you have. If it'd be more fun going out reaching lost people than it is going to entertain our flesh, we might see the kingdom come a lot faster. Can I get amen? amen. In Psalms 106, 32. They angered him, Moses, also with the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They provoked Moses' spirit. Do you realize there was times that when Moses was, was provoked in his flesh that he acted hastily? God told him to speak to the water. What did he do? He hit it with his stick. Why? Why? Because he hit it with his stick when they first started their journey. So he intellectually knew in his mind how to do this water trick. I hit that stick and boom, the water's parted. I hit that stick and the, and the water followed us wherever we went in the desert. But this time God said, speak to the rock. He hit the rock. God said, that's it, Mo." You can't go into the promised land. You give your stick over to Joshua. See, everybody say, obey the stick. Obey the stick. You won't hit somebody when you shouldn't have. That's you let God tell you to hit or to speak. And if you do, you'll find yourself getting into that place where you won't be provoked. See, the devil, devil does everything he can to provoke you. Have you ever been provoked? I'm having a good day today until Brother James came up. Now I'm not having a good day anymore. I wish he'd shut up. Oh, get rid of him, Lord. Help him go some other way. There's got to be someone that needs a brighter day. Move him, God, in that direction. My daughter advised me the other day. said, yeah, I've talked to a lot of your friends. And, you know, they say, well, you know, your daddy's a wonderful guy. But, you know, sometimes he talks too much. Well, you know, he's got that. And, and you know, when people are wanting to have a... A, a rod or a stick to hit you with, they pick up on that thing that others comment about others. And they use that in their ready defense to stay carnal and not change and be spiritual. See, my job is to help you stop being carnal and help you be spiritual. That you understand what spirit men do, how we act, how do we respond, how do we create. God's spirit in us is an innovating spirit. It's a creating spirit. And if I learn to walk with God's Spirit and listen to God's Spirit, then I will create righteousness in the lives of others. I'll create peace in the life of other people's storms. You see, we should not be afraid of representing God and His will because we are His will. See, the Pharisees continually tried to provoke Jesus. Luke eleven fifty three. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things, laying wait for him, seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Do you realize that what God was saying, that your enemy needs some words out of your mouth to destroy you? Oh, hypocrite, sit over here saying all that. Well, you ought to see him other night down there at Conky Joe's. He didn't sound like no Jesus person to me that night. 
they will use those words to intimidate and correct you or hurt you because why? They see the vacillation between two positions. Well, I want to love everybody. I told this guy one time when I was in the plants, he used to always pull in the bar after he'd get off work. We talked Jesus all day long out in the plant. But then all of a sudden, I, see him, I saw him stop the next day. I said, hey, I said, uh, I saw you went into the barn down there. Yeah, I always stop down there and drink a few beers with a man. I feel like I can get closer to him when I get down there with him. Shoot some pool. I, I don't, I don't I hate him. I'm going to be a, oh, so you're telling me you're doing this under ministerial rule. You're going in there to help them find Jesus. Well, that's God's business where they find him. Not my place just to show the light. I said, okay. Well, let me ask you something. The Bible said come out from amongst them, be a separate and holy people. What are, what are you going in there? If you're not going in there witnessing to them, then you're going in there to entertain and be a part of them. There's something that's going to transfer from them and you instead of you transferring what you have into them. Hey, well, you know, so I guess you think this. Uh, you could probably go home and sleep with a prostitute because you want to share Jesus with her. And as long as you sit there in bed and, and you just talk to her about Jesus, then it's okay. Hey, yeah, that'd be all right. I said, brother, your gospel is corrupt. That's not what God's righteousness teaches. That's nowhere in the Bible it teaches that. I said, about a month later, they came to work and they said, man, did you hear what happened this weekend? I said, no. Nah. He stuck a shotgun in his chest and blew himself away. This clown for Christ. I'm going to be the good guy. I'm going to make everybody in. You can't be the friend of the devil. You cannot go into his camp and say, I'm a good guy. I can strip my righteousness off and be unholy and be nice like all y'all want me to be. You disgrade God. God said we are to come out from amongst the world, be a separate and holy people, a righteous men and women, not because we're so strong, but because he's so strong in us. Somebody one day is going to see you, hate you, but then they're going to know you are their answer. They're going to find you and say, I get those phone calls late at night. Brother, my wife left me. Man, all this hell's going on. I got an ear. Let's talk. I want you to know I'm not your answer, but I know the one who is. And you've got a hearing problem. You're not going to understand God, so you're going to surrender to God and let him be God. Then all of a sudden, he's going to change your life. He's going to cause you to see your mornings turn to dancing. I know what it's like to live my life with my wife in hell. And I know what it's like to be free from that hell. And it is an awesome life. You're not right. Amen. It was different. It was when Jesus wasn't in the center of our lives, it was horrible. But when he became the center of our life, it's bearable. <laughs> it's a whole lot better. <laughs> it's great. It's wonderful. You see, the word provoke means to stir to action, cause anger, to excite, to rouse, to inflame, to instigate. So when emotions pulsate, the mind becomes deceived and conscience is denied and it's the normal standard of judgment. Well, now you're meddling now, dude. I come to help you, but now I'm going to curse you. You're embarrassing me. You're making me feel like that. that, that. I got it out there one time. In Mar uh, I went to Mardi Gras in Galveston, and I had all these teams I was responsible for. I had all these guys out there setting them in their groups, and I got my little group together, and all these college kids out there. Man, there were so many beer cans. The street was lit, just laudered. It was hard. It was just a mess. We're ready to go, guys. You all right? Well, all of a sudden, I took on these four college kids, and they were Buddhists and Hindus and all kinds of psychic awareness and all this other stuff. And I, and I, and I had somebody gave me a dadgum Tootsie Roll Pop. And I had that Tootsie Roll pop in my mouth. I like Tootsie Roll pops. I'm sucking on it, you know. And I was holding my hand. I was preaching to these guys. And this guy says, man, I couldn't listen to some dude sucking on a lollipop talking to me about anything. 212601 came up. I threw that sucker down. You want some of me? I got in the flesh. And all of a sudden, all those guys started yelling, look at this preacher, man. He's a litter bug. Throwing that sucker down on the ground. There's 150,000 beer cans everywhere stopping the traffic to do it. But they told the truth. I threw that sucker down on the ground. I was a hypocrite. All my kids watched these young men that were sitting there with me after we walked away and they left. 
they said, I, I'm going to repent to you. I should have jumped in there. The Holy Ghost was telling me I should have jumped in there and helped you. You were taking on six of them by yourself. I, 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 should, I said, no, please, all you, y'all listen to me. I failed you. I sinned against you. I lost it, guys. I had no right to lose it. That was an immaturity on me. That dude found my weak spot and he hit it. Every one of you got a flesh man. And every one of you got an inner man. And how many times do we get that one little button pushed and here comes old Zulu, the warrior from the pit. And we got to learn to break Zulu and he ain't never coming out of the box. That means I've got to be still, listen to God, inner man must grow and make the exchange so I do not represent the flesh, I represent the spirit. And that's a discipline. It's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be something you're going to just get because you're a Christian. See, you can be un unmanageable by the devil. Inner purity will produce outer power. You can have any more power outwardly than you've got purity inward. You've got to be willing to look at yourself and examine yourself. Paul said, I judge myself like I be judged by no man. There's a place where you look at yourself inside and say, God, I'm still not there. I need you to teach me more, God. Teach me your ways more clearly. I do see that. God, examine me. If you see something wrong with me, God, please, right now, reveal it to me so I can get rid of it. You see, the man who's really wanting to be exclusively God's property, then he's always revealing to God his weaknesses so God can give him his exchange. His exchange is your strength. God wants to make you strong. Can I get an amen? amen. In Matthew 6, 33, great scripture that every Christian knows but few practice. He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of, of God and his righteousness, and some things shall be added to you. The seek in the sum is the sum total of what you have. If you seek the kingdom first, priority number one, all things shall be added to you. You don't have to worry about you want a better house, you want better clothes, you want better this, you want a better job, you want better fine. The Bible says seek ye first the kingdom then. Don't, don't put those as, well, God, I'll serve you more when I see I got this. Many people say, God, when you heal me, I'll believe you. God said, no, you believe me, and I will heal you. There's an exchange. I can pray, oh, God, I believe that you said in your word that by your stripes I was healed. And I know that one day that's going to happen in me. That will never move God to heal you. When you pray, oh, God, I thank you that by your stripes I am healed. Thank you, God, not going to be. I already am. Well, what about this? I don't care about that. I am what God said I am. I have what God said I have. I can be what God said I can be. You need to scream that. Sometimes walk right out. I am what God said. I shut up, devil. I am what God gave me. I am, I am, I am. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, somebody in that demonic realm is going to tail out out of you. They're not going to have the force. They are not indestructible. They are crushed. They are powerless. We give the devil power by circumstance. God gives us power by faith to believe in what he said. See, the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. Everybody say that. The kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. Now, are we all members of the kingdom? Then anything that God has in his kingdom, it lives in us. It's not there because of circumstance. It's there because he said so. You see, we overcome by our re reaction to problems, not by the absence of problems. If you think one day you're going to find the lights going, woo, no more problems, it ain't going to happen. I begged to God one time, said, please, God, change me. I don't want this. I see where Paul begged, said, I was thought three times that you remove this thing. Said, God, I want to get it out of here. He said, you ready to come home? No, no, no. I said, I want you to fix me now. And he said, you're as fixed as you're ever going to be, you just don't recognize it. So you recognize that he don't lie, and he said, I healed you, I delivered you, I made you strong, I made you healthy, I made you wealthy. Everything that's in my kingdom is already inside within you. 
Your struggle is between your two ears. Your brain says that ain't true. Excuse me? If it ain't manifested in my life, does not mean it ain't true. It means I've got a fight of faith on my hands that something is trying to usurp the authority of God and say, you don't see it, you can't have it. I tell people all the time, I said, let me tell you something. I've had people tell me, well, you show it to me and I'll believe it. I said, no, you believe it and he will show it to you. God always requires faith. He requires you to believe him and take him at his word. The reason we went to hell in a handbasket was because we didn't have his word and we didn't know if he was real or not. But once the light came on, it came on for a reason. And that was for us to understand inward adorning. Everybody say that. See, you are adorned or you are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's on the inward man. It's not on the outsider man. 1 Peter 3. Verse 3. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plattening of hair and of the wearing of gold or the putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man, the inner man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Turmoil creates chaos in the language barriers around us. But peace, nothing can move you when you're in the midst of peace. Turmoils cannot move you when the peace that God gave takes some rules and reigns inside your heart. See, peaceful, calm, not anxious or wrought up. You have to make the exchange. When you believe what God said and receive what God said, then the exchange is made and you're, all the anxieties and frustrations and hurts and pains and cares start being frivolous. They go away. Because you made the change to trust God and believe what he said. See, anxious or anxiety means eagerly or earnestly desirous of a thing to the point of uneasiness or distress over a future uncertainty. Satan is one who lied in the beginning and he'll lie about the end. That's pretty good. When you were young, you jumped and hollered about all that healing and stuff and miracles and but now that you're old, hmm, you don't look and feel like you're some going at it person. What's that? That's thoughts that's trying to challenge the position of the possession. God's word didn't change because I got older. All right, Miss Margaret. That woman, I love her. I mean, she's a queen of the church. Why? Because she's a person that's ran the race and kept the faith and done exactly what the Bible says. I have witnesses. I have people that I know that have lived their life. David's grandma was 99 years young when she went to heaven. And the only reason she went was because her heart wore out. Her spirit was strong. She loved everybody. She made cakes for anybody on the street. She found everybody was sick. She always was helping, getting food for people. That was in her heart. It wasn't her church banner or somebody telling her to do that. She prayed her prayer. She knew her God. I told him at her funeral, I said, you know what? My grandma made me see and understand faith. She wasn't a lady of the word. But she was a lady of the Lord. And she did what we preach. She lived the life of faith. She reached out to anybody that was hurting, anybody that was crying, anybody that was undone. She, she was very visual when she'd see a, a bunch of cars around the house down the block and ask her, around, inquire, what's going on there? Well, they lost a child who got an accident or something. She'd go right in the kitchen, bake a cake, carry it down, knock on the door and say, I'm so sorry, I heard about it. I don't know you, but I'm your neighbor down here. I want to give you a cake. I said, my heart was taught by those who live what I preach. And I said at her funeral, I could sit and said, the greatest honor of my life is to give credence to her faith and who she believed in, whether she was Catholic. That had nothing to do with it. She was a believer. And she had the fruit of that in her spirit. Let's all stand. Every time that 
we come to church, we get the opportunity to make an exchange. Our way for his way. His light for our false light. Every one of us have to always seek God with a pure heart and say, God, I'll never deny the inner man that I am. Everyone who's here today and you've accepted Jesus in your heart, you have an eternal life that dwells inside you. And the only end door that we can see into that eternal kingdom is God's word. And when you start looking in the word of God and studying and praying the word of God, then your heart gets stronger than your mind. And all of a sudden your mind will not have the strength or the courage to deny God. You'll stop being so frivolous and you'll start being awesomely wonderful towards other people. Because our life is the sum total of what we give, not what we get. The only thing we come to get is the Word of God so that it will be seed in our soul and cause us to change. That somebody's life is going to be affected by the witness of the love of God that's in our heart, not our head. Heavenly Father, I just come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for every person that's here today. I thank you, God, that they're not moved by what they see, but they're moved by the word of God that is real. And God, we're not talking about somebody that was better and somebody that was worse. We're talking about all of us have yea and amen living on the inside of us. And help us to speak from our heart instead of our mind. Let us always guard our words that we will produce peace on earth and goodwill toward all men. That somebody is going to come to church here because of the witness of the love and the grace that's inside every person in this room. That somebody's going to say, where do you go to church? You're just so wonderful. You're such a nice person. You always do things. I don't have that living in me. And God, they'll make the exchange. And they'll become a member of the kingdom before they become a member of the church. Father, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing in our life. Bless us this week. In Jesus' name. And we all said. Praise God. Love someone, you can be dismissed.